How's it going? Welcome back to another great video with the Majestic Host, the Savior. A glorious day it is today because we are returning to the roots of good old fashioned survival horror. Good quality writing, okay? A game that has an interesting narrative, but it isn't trying to be a cinematic movie. It's still a video game and gameplay matters, but we get good quality writing. Now, that is a rare thing, sadly, in the video game industry nowadays, but we get that with the return of Alone in the Dark. So, we're going to be taking a look at this Alone in the Dark review, and I have to make sure you understand this, because a lot of people have got it twisted. This is not a remake, okay? This is not a remaster. This is a reboot, okay? This isn't, like, carrying on the story, which the old game didn't exactly receive the most positive reception, but this game I think will, because just the story here, so far from what I've seen, is good. Have you ever talked to a doctor about your condition? This is madness! So this is a complete reboot of Alone in the Dark, so I do hope you enjoy this Alone in the Dark review. It's going to be a quick one because I do have a lot of information to go over, but I've only managed to experience a little bit of the hands-on experience myself, so I don't have that much to go on, but I have done the extensive research. So this is an early access review of Alone in the Dark. I need to make that clear because for people who are new to the channel, I do early access reviews for new games that come out basically based on hands-on when I get codes and based on extensive research and for games that I absolutely love I go back and I do yearly reviews like Fallout 4 for example or something like Lies of P and I give it a new twist, I give it a new perspective updated for the year that we are currently in and I usually give it some kind of new philosophical twist. So if you do like gaming content, you are in the right place, subscribe to the channel, it would mean so so much to me. And if you are also interested in philosophical content, do also subscribe because I do both types of videos, hence the two demons on my shoulders, philosophical content and the gaming stuff. And I try and merge the two occasionally as well, become a wise one today. I'm trying to bring back old school YouTube, I really, I just... I care so much about this community, I'm so passionate about what I'm doing here and seeing the comments, uh, you know, returning fans and viewers, I should say, I don't really have any fans, um, but yeah, people who watch my content who have been with me for a long time, you just mean absolutely everything and it's never too late to become a wise one and consider supporting an independent creator basically by dropping a small donation, that's how I can keep doing this as I don't get sponsors as often as I would like, so please do support me by dropping a donation or by checking out my music on Spotify. So I do hope you like this early look and this Alone in the Dark game review. I do hope you enjoy it. So let's just get straight into it. So basically, Alone in the Dark was almost a precursor to creating the survival horror genre, that and Resident Evil, of course. So it's nice to go back to the roots and this game really knows what it's doing, okay? And I have to emphasize, people who like survival horror games, you're gonna absolutely love this. I love games where you can really choose your own adventure or affect the world, or the world affects you. That and the gameplay certainly are the power of games apart from movies. So now let's get into what I always do, the positives and the negatives, okay? So the first positive is this surprised me, okay, from what I've actually got to see so far. This is not going to be just jump scares galore, which is good, because that's cheap horror in my opinion. This is very much a psychological narrative. This is very much a psychological narrative horror experience, and when you're shooting the enemies and fighting the enemies or avoiding them, that's at times when it's least scary. It's more about the atmosphere when you're entering these weird locations or these kind of dream state locations, that's when it can be very unsettling or if you get mobbed up on, of course, that can be pretty terrifying as well. But it's more of a narrative that's going on here that keeps it feeling everything on edge at all times. 
And that leads to my next big positive of this game, okay? And that is the writing, the voice acting. This is so, so good. Now, they have, of course, our favorite friend here, who is well known for his role in Stranger Things and his, uh, his strong political messaging. Seriously. Wow, <laughs> so insightful, very, 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 very wise. Mm -hmm. I just love the fact that this game is very detailed. So when you're reading a note, when you're picking up something, they actually have voice work to go along with it. And it's not, you know, just like a monotone, oblivion NPC just reading the dialogue or something. You know, you can really get the sense of the character, like an old lady reading this letter to, you know, like her son and now she's like being mutilated or something like that you know it just really adds to the sense of immersion okay and then of course the character that you play as the acting the voice acting is just so well done and yeah i just think the writing here is phenomenal and we don't get many good games that are clever that respect the player when it comes to story and narrative and i'm going to get into that more but there's some really cool ideas here like old school mode where basically you can reject all hints all tutorials, all of that stuff, and it truly makes you feel immersed because you absolutely have to figure out what's going on, how to figure out these puzzles as if you were there yourself, and then combined with the writing and the ambience and the tone, this is the best horror experience I've had in a very long time since something like Resident Evil 2, and that's very high praise. So now to bring it to a small negative is the visuals, okay? So this game does look dated, it doesn't look like a next-gen experience, um, that's for sure, but this whole generation has just been absolutely terrible when it has come to the promise of what next gen is supposed to be. You know, every game should have ray tracing, every game should be high FPS on the PS5, Xbox Series X, but it's not like that, sadly, and they're just not utilizing the power of these machines. This generation has just been a disappointment, but this does feel very last gen in its visual department. The lighting is nice, the fog and the volumetric lighting and stuff like that, of course that looks nice, but you come to expect that. But it just looks a little bit last gen, especially the characters, they don't really look very realistic. I do like the art style, but you will be disappointed, I think, with the graphics here. Um, and usually that doesn't matter, but in a narrative story game, of course I want to be as immersed as possible, the motion capture that they did here looks believable, but because the character models themselves look dated, it just brings back like PTSD flashbacks to L.A. Noir. Uh, it's very much that kind of vibe when you see these characters talking to each other. The next positive here is of course the soundtrack. It's very important in a horror survival game, and they've nailed it. The downtime moments where you get this kind of moody jazz and this noir aesthetic is really nice. And then when you're entering a tense location, it's not like a generic buildup of, you know, strings and just, a, you know, like a pitched violin or something to make you feel on edge. You know, it's very tastefully done. It's a very moody ambience, subtle. Um, and, you know, as someone who makes music myself, I really appreciate the kind of nuance they took with the soundtrack. Um, and I think that it just does a great job of making it feel tense and unsettling. Okay, so the UI here, this is also a positive. It's not cluttered, and the fact that you can strip it all away, um, pretty much, and especially with this old school mode that they added, like I said, you won't get hints when you're doing puzzles. It actually respects your intelligence. As a gamer, it doesn't think you're, you know, like a two-year-old toddler like Todd Howard and has to basically baby the game for you, make it all just laid out for you, like Starfield or something like in a Ubisoft game where it's just like, do this, do this, follow this order. Um, no, it does actually respect your intelligence, which is very refreshing to say. It doesn't feel like a Sony exclusive cinematic experience. You do really have to use your brain with this one. And um, yeah, I just like that old school vibe. It really does remind me of an older game uh, in the best possible sense. I also like the fact that it's easy to, you know, go into your menu and look at your previous investigations and stuff like that. It's not 
convoluted or overly complicated like Alan Wake 2 or something. Um, it's very laid out, stripped, and simple. And I've only seen a few puzzles as of right now because it's only been a few hours of gameplay and from all of the research that I've done as well, it's not really so much for Resident Evil style puzzles that we've come to, you know, get used to in survival horror games. It's much more kind of using your brain about like what's going on in this location and the environmental storytelling, finding something and then using that to progress later on. And finally, let's quickly talk about the combat in this game. And that is a negative, I would have to say. Mostly this game is a positive just because of the ambience, the writing and the story so far. It definitely has me intrigued and I definitely will be continuing the story but when it comes to the gameplay itself you know I like the investigation I like the puzzles um, like I said you know you really have to use logic and the environment around you to progress um, which I like you know it's very much logical in its layout so if you think you can do something usually you can do it um, but I do think that the combat here is lacking it needs some kind of lock-on system similar to a Souls-like game because that would make melee just feel a lot better. The movement of your character is rather janky and when you're like, you know, snap turning around to shoot an enemy, it just feels very janky. It definitely doesn't feel like a third-person shooter, okay, let's just put it that way. And when you do finally hit something, it doesn't exactly have much impact. The same with the melee, you're just kind of swinging wildly before you hit something. So the combat isn't great, but that isn't the main focus of this game, so I can forgive it for that. But it would be a lot better if it had, you know, much more refined combat systems in it, because when you do encounter enemies, it just makes it much more fun. But I do like the fact that it is slow and deliberate. It's not trying to do like um, Alan Wake, where it's trying to make the combat a little bit more of a third-person shooter. You feel like a basically untrained person, an untrained detective who's not used to shooting monsters which is fair enough so it does make sense but they just could have made it feel a little bit more smooth and more deliberate so that is my alone in the dark review i do think that finally this is the game that we should have had all those years ago and it's finally you know a return to form in the survival horror um genre and i think it's been a while since we got a good quality survival horror game where it's actually about horror it's not trying to be an action shooter and just the level of maturity in this when it comes to the writing and the voice work and the characters, you know, it all feels very immersive with that regard. Just a little bit lackluster when it comes to the animations and the gameplay with the combat and stuff like that. But the story, the puzzles and just the kind of world itself is very intriguing. So I do think people who like that type of experience, a narrative experience, and especially if you're a fan of you know, a noir type horror aesthetic, similar to Shutter Island, or even a little bit of cultic horror like Cthulhu and stuff like that, you will definitely like this game. So I do hope you enjoyed this Alone in the Dark review. Um, I do think this is definitely worth it if you're a fan of this type of game. If not, then definitely uh, wait for a sale, I would say. But I do hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Have a great day. Peace out.